Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Let's let's dive right in. Into the world of Alexander. Into the ancient world of Alexander. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watched Alexander. Uh, S- open Sikander. parenthesis. <laughs> Hold on. I'm not First done parenthesis. saying the title. Okay. For open parenthesis. The uh, second open parenthesis. Unrated. Close parenthesis. Final cut, close parentheses. Okay, so it should have been Alexander, open bracket, the, then open parentheses, unrated, close parentheses, final cut, close bracket. I don't know. I don't think you should tell me how to do my job, Tom. Um, I think I should when you're fucking wrong. What would you do if you ever reached the end of the world? Never will there be an Alexander like you. Alexander the Great. Conquer your fear! And I promise you'll conquer death! The gods have a way of punishing such pride. No man or woman can be too powerful or too beautiful without disaster befalling. He never lusted for war, Alexander, or enjoyed it so. Uh, Alexander, be reasonable! This is a, uh... Well, it's a Thursday. It is. We, uh, uh, it means this is a, a Patreon episode where, uh, 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 one of our supporters said, Hey, watch this. And then we said, you got it. You got it, dude. Mm -hmm. Like in, like in, um, we flashed two thumbs up. Yep. Uh, our Patreon to thank for this, uh, is, is going by the name Dan Hackroyd. That's pretty great. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty into I'm pretty into Dan Hackroyd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I won't lie. I am a fan of Dan of Dan Hackroyd. Hackroyd. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hackroyd, uh for for allowing us to watch this movie that is 3 hours and 33 minutes long. It is. There is an intermission. Yep, and directed by Oliver Stone. Indeed. And starring Colin Farrell. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Uh, and Angelina Jolie as his mother, even though they're the exact same age. I was going to say, I believe they're the same age. <laughs> I looked it up. They're born one year apart. Uh, depending on when they were born, they might be the exact same age. Uh, what, okay, okay, Tom, what did, how did you like Alexander? Um, are you sitting down? You're probably sitting down because we're uh-huh. recording, right? Yeah. Um, I actually really liked it. <laughs> All right, Tom, are you... Tom? Uh-huh. Are you sitting down? I am sitting down. I also really liked it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I re- okay. So I'm going to look up this Rotten Tomatoes score because I well, know it's going to be a, a doozy. Lot of it's, a lot of it's based on the theatrical version. Okay, yes. This movie has a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 35% audio, audience score. I assume they watched the theatrical version, which was like fucking what, like an like two hours. Um, I think two hours and fifty minutes. Really? Uh huh. So they didn't cut out that much. One hundred and seventy-five minutes. Okay. It's a theatrical gonna, cut. I was going to blame it on the cuts, but that's uh... well. Also, I'm reading the plot description of the theatrical version, and it's it flows completely differently really yeah like I th- it's not just the added footage it's the way the movie is cut together yeah um this was a proper epic it really was yeah it kind of did everything i needed an epic to do the longer it went the more i liked it which was weird um you right? you'd think I was like, like i'd get tired of it but I like was, i was like i started this movie out like kind of lounging yeah and then about 20 minutes in, I was sitting straight up. And about yeah. like 30 minutes in, I was leaning forward. Um, I watched it with Marina, and we were both like silent the entire time, just intently watching this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it lost me. A, well, 
the beginning, I think I wasn't paying enough attention. I liked the beginning, but what really got me was the end because um, when it becomes clear that this is like like any good epic, it's just sort of a around a person. Mm-hmm. It's not like a traditional film style. It's just it's sort of like chronicling his life. Yes, uh, and and kind of the goods and the bads. Like he's not a hero. No, uh, he's, uh, it's 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 kind of just about like a twenty year old going to India to find himself, but also taking an army. Right, he's he's yeah. he's he's thirty when he reaches India. Oh, but okay. yeah. Um, no, there's Anthony Hopkins has a line at the end where he says the truth is what does he say? The truth is complicated, and it's also not. Right. So it's like yeah, he did do a lot of he, he did like he, he he created a huge empire, and he was progressive in some ways but also he did a lot of shitty things yeah and generally he was he was kind of a dickhead like he he, he's just pushing his army like we're doing this we're doing this then the moment he gets hurt he's like i want to go home (laughs) and it's just (laughs) like the whole army the whole time has been like i want to go home we have to go home and he's like no and then the moment he gets a boo-boo he's like okay i guess now we're going home and it's like fucking finally (laughs) You blonde bastard. <laughs> you blonde son of a bitch. <laughs> you inexplicably Irish Greek person. Yeah, that wig. Uh, there was a lot. Like, I think I like it felt like multiple actors were doing the biopic of either Kurt Cobain or Jason Mewes. Like, they all looked like combinations of that. Mm-hmm. They all had just the long blonde grunge hair. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can see why... So here's the thing is I, I, in a way I get it because I really like epics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if in 2004. I don't think it, it, people were real friendly towards epics in 2004 is, unless your return of the king. I was about to say, which is funny to say considering what was happening in 2004. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 but I would say the Lord of the Rings are, they're epics, but they don't feel like classic epics to me. They're not, not in the same way they're 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 just they're they're long adventure movies yeah this felt like this reminded me of like lawrence of arabia or or any of any of those epics where it's just sort of mm-hmm. focused on one person and it's not like it's not again it's not a hollywood thing it's it's or dr Shivago it reminded me more of without spoiling that film where it's just sort of like it, it's not clean Mm-hmm. Life doesn't just sort of wrap itself up in this really mm-hmm. neat way. It's sort of just like his story just kind of fizzles out. Yes. Uh, and he doesn't really... It's about like someone kind of failing in such an epic way that people were like, he was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. And and like and yeah, it's got. It also has. I think it also reminds me of Doctor Shivago because Doctor Shivago is all told by I believe Alec Guinness, and uh, like it's it's bookended by that. Mm-hmm. It's it's an old man being like, I want to tell you about your father. Uh, so it just it it gave me those vibes. Yeah, uh, hardcore. Yeah. yeah, but I get people. I don't know. At the same well, time, meant, I'm like, like, you guys watch fucking people binge watch Netflix, so they have right. it in there. And you, you, you motherfuckers watch Transformers movies that are two hours and 40 minutes long. Right. So, that also star Anthony Hopkins. Right. Um, no, I'm really curious now to watch the theatrical cut, because I wonder what's so bad about it. Yeah, I, I'm curious what they did there. Because um, I'm reading here, um, the, the whole reason he got to do multiple cuts of this movie... Um, is because his first director's cut sold like millions of copies. Oh, wow. So they were like, well, shit. And he was like, okay, well, let me try this again. And he like, he made this final cut that's also sold over a million copies. So it's like... So we're not alone. No, I don't think we are. (laughs) It just... All right. Here's what... Okay. Here's what I'll say. Is that I do think epics go under more scrutiny when uh you're watching him in theater for like, certain for example, because i've been very hard on tarantino for his length because i don't think he's making epics they don't mm-hmm. feel like epics they're just very long uh and i, I think bet it's, you I, like yeah go ahead that? i was just gonna say um i think it's it's the length is why like if you're gonna make a movie that's very long people are are gonna hyper scrutinize it for like okay well why is it this long exactly 
And especially if you're walking, watching it in theaters. So like when I mm-hmm. watched The Hateful Eight, and I'm like, why is this so fucking long? I want to go home. This takes place in a fucking cabin. Right. Just make <laughs> like it's not an <laughs> sure epic adventure. The movie is in one room. Yeah, you don't have to make it this long. It doesn't need to be this long. It's a very simple story, honestly. Uh, it serves better short. But I bet you if I was watching it in the comfort of my own home, I'd be a lot more forgiving. So yeah, I, there's when also I finally, that factor. Is that- this, yeah, I can yeah vouch for that. I finally watched The Hateful Eight on, uh, at home, and I enjoyed it fine, and the, the length didn't bother me. Right, because you can kind I'm of sitting be like, in my house, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you can pause it and go yeah, make some yeah. food or yeah. like you know, I can, I can make I can make an evening out of it. Yeah, uh, but when you're sitting in a theater, you you it's nothing but you in the movie, mm-hmm. and so it's like I've been, I've we've watched a lot of bad movies, and we like have, for sure, there's definitely movies where I was like, I can't imagine sitting in a theater even if it's like a 90 minute movie just being like well can you imagine having to sit just you in the movie uh but that's what happened for this Mm -hmm. yeah like i watched this full through i watched it in one sitting just because i i don't know why i guess i wanted to punish myself secretly i don't know (laughs) uh but i ended up rewarding myself because i enjoyed it yeah i uh i was really into this shit yeah <laughs> so that's, i don't know what else to say <laughs> i don't know there's some funny shit in it i there's definitely pretty... want a greek statue of val kilmer that the uh the greek statue of val the likeness of that statue was so shocking yeah <laughs> it's just like that's just a statue of val kilmer <laughs> yeah maybe he got paid yeah in that i don't know there's there's a lot they... to talk about i, I, mean, I know I, mean... I know i know there is i'm just <laughs> Yeah. Just oh, in terms of like judging this movie, yeah, uh, yeah, my, I, I don't have any mixed emotions about it. I was just like, yeah, it was really good. I didn't think the opening credits looked like a museum slideshow, and so I was like, uh oh, that's not a good sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the you you pointed out to me the parrot fucking <laughs> the parrot. did not want Anthony Hopkins to touch it. <laughs> Within the first five minutes of this movie, a parrot bites the absolute yeah. shit out of Anthony Hopkins, and Anthony Hopkins rolls with it because he clearly wasn't supposed to be bit by that <laughs> parrot. <laughs> that was one where they're like, "Cut, Anthony, are you all right?" <laughs> Yeah, fine. we all saw it. We yeah. all saw that, <laughs> right? Because it's a wonder. He goes all the way around yeah. that room, <laughs> so it's like they had to film for like three minutes, and then they got to be like, uh, "Tony, you okay?" Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, the Hound is in this. The Hound is uh, super in this. Everybody's in this. Jared Leto's in it. Mm-hmm. The fuck is he doing in there? Being uh, Jared Leto. Yeah, Val Kilmer giving a tour of a cave tour that mm-hmm. I loved. Val the, Kilmer was killing it in this movie. He really is. He this, plays, this, this grizzled monster of a king. Yeah, he plays his shitty father, and Angelina Jolie is the mother. <laughs> is, who, his, is his shitty mother. Yeah, I liked I liked her more than Val Kilmer. Uh, yeah, but, she but had, you, you, you do know, get, she had some problems. You do, you get like, a, yeah, you get a hardcore uh, Lady Macbeth vibe off of her. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, but I mean, she's great. Like, everybody's really good in this movie. Oh, yeah. Like I didn't, when there she, was, I didn't think a single performance was bad. Well, they knew they were in a fucking epic. Yeah. Like Oliver Stone, I think he just went to all the actors and he's like, you've all seen the epics, right? We're doing that. So be really good. <laughs> and like over the top, but good. Mm-hmm. Like when she screams, oh shit, I wrote it down. What did she scream? She screamed in my womb. I carried my Avenger. And mm-hmm. I was like, Jesus. Yep. That's some writing. Jesus, Angelina. Yeah, the the funniest line in this whole thing, though, was from the Hound. Uh, I wrote this down because he said, I'm known to sleep with my eyes open as a baby's ass. To which I replied, what? <laughs> what are you saying, Hound? What does that mean? <laughs> open as a baby's ass. Yep. What, it, what does that mean? What is that? What are you know. doing to babies, Hound? I don't know. He's just, I think he's just the Hound no matter where he is yeah he was great in this <laughs> yeah he was great yeah um this also this movie front loads the epic battle uh it oh, yes. it starts with like the epic most epic of fucking battles it's like a 30 minute battle i want to say 20 minute yeah i'm sure in the other version they shortened it but i um, wonder if also, that's one well, of the look- things that they like moved 
to e- nor- near the end or something. Yes. That's dumb. Mm-hmm. This movie won me over with that battle. Like, I was like, oh, okay. And then there wasn't anything that, anything like that action packed after it. Not for and it a while. Didn't matter. Not, yeah, not until it gets to the second battle in India, which is much shorter, but like way more intense. With the elephants? Yeah. Yeah, that was fucked up. That elephant battle was fucked. <laughs> that horse scene where the, the color changes and when yeah. he, gets, he gets stabbed and. Yeah, yeah. Holy and, shit. And uh, I think. Um, you can interpret that a lot of ways, but uh, part of the voiceover as the battle is ending, Anthony Hopkins says, like, this was like our, our bloodiest battle. We were just butchers. Like, after that day, none of us were men any longer. So I think maybe that's right. the reason for the color change. And also it's because yeah. it changes color when Alexander gets shot. So it's like this is the beginning of the end. Yeah, yeah. I figured it that way. Is They, yeah. they do a lot of, like, POV of death. Like, mm-hmm. when Alexander's on his deathbed, too, he's all, he's all fucked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, bleeding from the eyes uh but that first scene man he gives a speech which this is a overall note for these types of films mm-hmm. are they passing the speech back like when he's he's giving it to like i don't know 20 guys oh yeah do they like whisper it back to the other guys also like, they have he's saying they have like three sections like they have yeah. the right, the left, and the center. There's no way, like all I don't know, ten thousand guys can hear him. Are other people give like jazzing up some other speeches? Like, is it just people are like ah, oh, I didn't get the Alexander section? But yeah. even in his section, they're not. They can't hear that shit. Right. I Only think like a, the first couple of rows can hear him. Yeah, I would. I always wanted to see a sequence of one of those battles because there's been so many. Like Lord of the Rings, you know, has a shitload. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, Bahu Bali, which we watched recently, we did, yeah, and we'll be watching the sequel to Tom. Oh, good, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, that one has it, and like, I always want to see those battles. They're always from the point of view of the guy giving the speech. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want one from like some guy in the back who's fucking terrified. Then they show that's all right. I really like this scene because the music is like heroic, but kind of like horror movie esque. It's like kind of tense. Yeah. Like, it's not fun. Uh, You don't feel, you don't want the battle to begin. No. And then they they flash over to the the Persian side. um, And it's just like they're watch. you see from their point of view, them watching Alexander give the speech and he's just like making animal noises and they're all just making animal noises. Right. I loved that guy playing the leader there. He He was was stone cold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I and then the, the 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 hound looks back and one of the men has pissed himself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to see that all like permanently from the point of view of some guy in the back and he can't hear what the guy's yelling. Right, so like, he can't you can get see the guy giving, Yeah, <laughs> he's just like... and he's just waiting. And then he yeah. hears some cheering, and then I guess he cheers too because he hears the front row cheering. Mm-hmm. And then everything starts moving, and like the carnage like doesn't get to him right away, and it's fucking terrifying. Like it's terrifying that idea in this movie did make it feel terrifying yeah the battles were always uh, like the two battles they show are pretty uh, <laughs> yeah like you said they're they're tense and the music goes back and forth between being like the standard rousing epic and also like this kind of horror movie yeah we see some guy's skull get crushed by an elephant like it's like yeah that happens later that's great yeah that's pretty sweet i was um, bummed about the the poor animals but i mean the horse got a horse statue so that horse there's that that horse uh took some motherfuckers down with him yeah that horse had a fucking life that <laughs> yeah. horse had a go of it yeah As alexander's horse. horse gets lit up like uh while fighting an elephant while fighting an elephant yeah he gets lanced a hundred times like baromir uh, yeah, but it's it's still like rearing up and kicking people and shit. Oh, that, yeah. hor- that horse died hard. Oh yeah, that horse had a whole arc because they show it him did. as a kid. Like the, the how long do horses live? I guess that's a question for another another podcast. But uh, yeah, they, he he's like everybody's like no one can train that horse, and then of course Alexander does, uh, and then and then. Uh, yeah, he builds a horse statue for him in the end. That horse and like, deserves I, that, was, that statue. Yeah, that was the only relationship that I got emotional about because they flash back to the horse 
and he's scared of his the whole thing is the horse is like scared of his shadow and mm-hmm. alexander understands him and then at the end he does the same thing with the horse mm-hmm. he like calms the horse and he's like let's you know one last time mr yeah. horse that's what he named him yeah mr horse mr horse mm-hmm. captain um, horse captain horse yeah that was that was fucking emotional yeah that's the thing that's what makes epics good is it's the same thing that makes like an hbo uh series or mini series good is that we get to spend a lot more time building those kind of connections exactly so that yeah, yeah when that shit happens you feel it mm-hmm. and you don't need you don't need three goddamn movies to do it sometimes sometimes you just need one three hour yeah three sometimes you just need one movie. really long movie yeah, like a Jared Leto. Jared Leto's untimely death. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was his shirt poisoned. Did I get that right? No, no. His he, he drank from a. They said he mixed his his. They they said he mixed some of the water with the wine. Oh. And, and they're in um. Oh, Babylon in India. It, well, they're not in. No, in Babylon. They're okay. in Babylon, but like they're so Alexander's like incredulous about it. He's like, how could he have brought back typhus for all the way from India? And then he suspects that Rosario Dawson has actually poisoned him. Rosario Dawson's in this. She sure is playing a, yeah. a, 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 a barbarian princess. Yeah. Who like all the women in this movie look like they, uh, they constantly have a squint on their face. They're like constantly glaring and you can, you can see every time they look at any of the guys, they're just thinking fucking dumbass. Oh yeah. Like they're not, they're, again, Angelina Jolie is no fucking hero, but like they all just seem permanently just irritated and right. fed up. Of course, with this bullshit. All, this is a whole lot of bullshit around them at all of times. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah the uh, no, the, the poison shirt thing. That's how that's how Hercules dies. Oh, and and okay. uh, Anthony Hopkins mentions it in one of the voiceovers uh, when he's talking no. about how like. Like you said, like in, uh, when you compared it to Doctor Zhivago, well, how it kind of they just sort of fizzle out. It's not like neatly wrapped up. And he yeah, has they that just bit sort of, of die. Yeah, he has that bit of narration where he's like, uh, Alexander should have died in India in that battle because that would have been like a, 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 yeah, a, a mythological cool. ending. Yeah, and then he points out, but no, that's not how life actually happens. Hercules died because he put on a poison shirt. <laughs> right. Alexander either drank too much <clears throat> or was poisoned. Right. And like, who can say, I love when uh, the Anthony Hopkins is like, and this person poisoned this person. And then that person poisoned this person, but not before uh, they poisoned this person where it's just like, Oh, all you motherfuckers are just poisoning each other. Well, yeah. And they keep that thread going throughout the movie where it's like, you're, you, you are seeing the clear divide among his generals. Right. And they try um, to fucking poison his ass. Yeah, and it's like, oh, as soon as he dies, it's just going to be civil war, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it does. They like fight over his fucking they body. Literally fight over his body. Yeah, they're just grabbing at his body. <laughs> yeah, the first guy who tries to poison him gets executed by uh, like by means of awesome. I, where they're like, someone's going to huck a spear into you. And it's I like, laughed seriously? incredibly hard at that scene because, first of all, first of all, yeah, it's just awesome. They have him tied to a post and like a guy from like eight feet away lances a fucking spear into him. It's really funny. Um, and second, Anthony Hopkins voiceover is going at that point and he says, uh, none of us uh, stood up for him um, because none of us really liked him. <laughs> and then, like as soon as he finishes right. that line, the spear gets <laughs> thrown gets into the spear. guy. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to you know, be like, execution by spear was a thing we made up that afternoon. Yeah. No one had ever done it before, but you know, we didn't really like him, like I yeah. said. We thought it was pretty bitchin'. Yeah, we thought it'd be kind of funny. And also, and, it was. and also, I mean, if we're and also we're being honest now, he always kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> so, the longest discussion we had was over who got to throw the spear. Yeah. <clears throat> A whole debate over that. <laughs> it lasted an entire evening. Yeah, it's sort of it's the beginning of the end there, I think, because the I- the idea, well, the conflict of this movie is that Alexander basically takes his army to go explore and conquer. Yeah. Uh, they, they and, established when he's little, he wants to go to the end of the world. Yeah. And he's, and he's, he, he's a dick, obviously. They, they, they talk about it. They're like, any tribe that resisted, we slaughtered. 
Um, but then if if people welcome him, he's just like, all right, let's fuck. Like it's just like let's fucking yeah, party, he, guys. Yeah, he he, like, he would leave. He seems to he would leave their their kings in charge. Right. So like, yeah, yeah, as yeah, long as you, as long he wasn't as you like let. taking <laughs> over, he was just like yeah, he's creating franchises. Yeah, yeah basically, he's just like. Let's have a few wine parties. Uh, let's fuck around for like, I don't know, a couple of weeks and let's move on. And his generals basically get more and more like, you know, they're they're all pretty racist about it. Yes. Uh, and, and Alexander is as woke as anybody can be in yeah. this scenario, in this time. Because mm-hmm. he's just like, these, these cultures are older than us, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. So we're going to conquer them but yeah. also respect them it's like it's yeah like, no, all right. we, all, we all need to it's like we should all be united because he like he grabs that one dickhead cassander and he's like what he like screams in his face like oh you're so much better than they are what makes you that way and so he's like we're all the same and we should be united under my rule yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so even he, at the end anthony hopkins is like we did something great and it's like did did you uh, um, I also like how I, I I love how it's such a because explorers have been doing this forever where they're like we did it we reached the end of the world and meanwhile there's tribes who are just like motherfucker there's more that way like you didn't reach the I've been doing this like my yeah. whole life you no, just we, found we, us yeah they're like, where they're no, like we, we, we were at the center of the world and you're over here at the end of the world <laughs> yeah no we cross that ocean every three months to go you know get supplies like yeah. this, this isn't where it ends my man yeah <laughs> and like you aren't where it begins like, yeah exactly exactly yeah uh, i mean you, you can i mean there are fucking hundreds of books written about how great of an accomplishment this was but i guess it's like the beginning of he had for the time the most modernistic view of how the world could be where it's like mm-hmm. no we don't always we don't all have to be i mean he still was viewing it from a king's point of view but he at right. least had the basic idea of like no we should all be one thing like we're, we should we shouldn't just be isolated yeah right he's just woke the progressive as a, bar is low right in he's this a, world he's just woke as a as a as a fucking greek king from 300 bc could be <laughs> yeah exactly he's like look we're still gonna conquer them yeah no but this we're still not all gonna like to me yeah we're not gonna like slaughter them all and like they have did you, you see those jugglers they have they have some cool shit it's i love a, that at his like wedding like yeah. when, they're, when they're panning around the crowd and there's this one dude juggling nobody's looking at him and he's not that like on, yeah he's not on a stage he's just off to one side juggling right. Just incidental juggling. Do you think that's all he does? Um, like no, he, probably like, has a, got... he probably has a day job. Really? I was thinking like he's got there's warriors and there's like blacksmith and there's all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then and then there's the like then they're like oh that guy he's he knows how to flip stuff around in his hands real cool. We just keep him around. He works like you know like three days a, a year whenever we have reason to celebrate. We don't have many reasons to celebrate, but when we do, yeah, I guess he probably needs another job. Yeah. What do you think he does? I don't know. Maybe he... What would uh, he do on the side? I don't know. Maybe he makes dyes. Think he's like a librarian? He could be a librarian. Sure, he could make dyes. Yeah, Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what he does. He runs a magic shop. He runs a magic shop. He might run a magic shop. I don't know. Uh, Like at at their mall? Mm Mm-hmm. Sure. Whatever their mall is. Yeah. Um, Val Kilmer gets stabbed to shit. Did you notice who stabbed him? The person who stabs Val Kilmer is Toby Kebbell. No. Yep. Of course it's Toby Kebbell. Of course it's Toby Kebbell. How does he... He's in fucking everything. He's in everything. Toby. <laughs> Tobes. Toby Kebbell. What are mm-hmm. you doing there stabbing Val Kilmer? Um, Stabbing I Val mean, Kilmer. Yeah, he had pretty good reason to. Val yeah. Kilmer had a whole thing going. Yeah, Val Kilmer was a real piece of shit. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's about I think 400 people in line to want, wanting to kill him. So yeah, he was. It was <laughs> the role Val Kilmer was born to play. <laughs> um, just a real grizzled yeah, scumbag. One eye, Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he really was. He was a yep. Great A scumbag. Yep. Real fucking dirtbag. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He's he's got parent issues. When she says, because her his mom the whole time is like, "You're you, Zeus is your father," mm-hmm. which I guess she never proves either way. No, she just like adamantly insists on it. Right. Her evidence is never had I been made love to as I was then. And I was like, what a bummer thing to hear from your mom about (laughs) Zeus. Oh, yeah, man. Zeus fucks like a stallion. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Zeus gets in there like a fucking American gladiator. Zeus blasted me like no other. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It would have been amazing if Zeus had a role in this and he was played by Billy Bob Thornton. Oh yeah, was this during her were Billy they, Bob were Thornton they times? They were no, 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 no. At this time, I it was her and Brad. Th- oh, okay. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Was had Brad doing Troy? Uh, yes. Okay, that was a bad movie, from what I remember. It's not great. Like that, I think that movie was was worse than this, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, easily, yeah. It's way worse. Um. Yeah, relationships in this are are relationships in this are, uh, are pretty fluid. He mouth kisses his mom. Everybody's fucking. It's very, yeah. I don't know, Game of Thrones-ish. Kind of. Uh, was him and Jared, yeah, him and Jared Leto weren't were doing anything. Were they? Okay, well, they cl- yeah, clearly they were. Like, he's, they're clearly in love with each other. He says several times that uh, uh, Jared Leto is the person he loves, and Jared Leto's clearly devoted to him. But they do, they made this strange decision in the film that I can't quite figure out where they're clearly lovers, like they clearly love each other. He's his, uh, Jared Leto's his closest right. confidant. He says, I'm nothing without you more than once. Um, but they never kiss. They only ever hug. Right. That's what was weird. I was like, come on. Yeah. They made it like weirdly chase and I don't understand why. It, the movie wasn't prudish. You see him kissing all like other guys, other women. There's yeah, exactly. Ros- Rosario Dawson is uh, very naked in it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So... I that's why I was thinking it was um I don't know I was thinking that, that was part of the point is that they weren't together ever on a sexual no. level they're just like in love no I don't I don't think so I think it's it, they're they make it pretty explicit it's just they don't ever kiss which is strange what if they were just like no I'm not kissing like I'll kiss other guys but I'm not kissing Jared Leto I don't know where his mouth has been it's Which true. is it's a, a fair, that's a fair thing. Valid concern. Valid, valid concern for Colin Farrell as well. <laughs> don't know where Colin Farrell's mouth has been. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah neither yeah. of them. I don't know. It was, it was an odd choice and I couldn't figure out why they, he did that. I couldn't figure out why Oliver Stone made that decision. I don't know. Maybe because we were wondering, like it, it, maybe because... <sighs> I see. I don't know historically how accurate any of this is, but maybe it was ambiguous. Mm, I don't know. Um, yeah, I had always he- I had always heard that Alexander was pretty openly bisexual, but I just mean like their relationship with him and Jared Leto. I don't know. I don't know, but he loves him so much that he has the doctor executed when he dies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> Which. Which I can only hope that'll happen on my deathbed. I hope the doctor that oversees my death be- gets executed for not for like allowing me to die. Because why not? That's a baller move. Yeah. Well, at that point, like Alexander is deteriorating from alcohol abuse, paranoia, exhaustion, um, and right. he's so par- he's Again, so he's paranoid at this point. No, no, no. So he's so paranoid yeah. at this point that he just sees conspiracy everywhere. Um, and it's, it's, and they show yeah. us the two timelines in the movie that they cut back and forth between um, are the one timeline when he's a kid is mo- it's starts with the kid and it's moving towards his father's death. And the other timeline is starts at the, the big battle with the Persian King and is moving towards his death. Um, right. And uh, the closer we get to his father's death, we start to see why he is so... He has that paranoia sort of uh, instilled in him. It's because his mom is always scheming. His dad was murdered in public, probably orchestrated by his mom. Um, right. So, and of course, he turns into his father. They do a he, good job. Yep. Yeah. Where when he's, he chokes out Rosario Dawson, mm-hmm. and it's like, I'm becoming my father. Mm-hmm. It's like, oof. 
you're this is a fucked up family my friend yeah <laughs> uh he yeah so it is sort of just it's part of this is also like like he's horrified when his dad dies and everybody is a, a, a like immediately like hey man hey bro congratulations yeah you're the king like nobody cares about his dad they're just like yeah you're king now well it's it's, it's like that, it's weird it is it is weird but it's also it's that it's and it's another i think it's another part that fuels his paranoia and also part of his hatred for right. his mom and his parents is because it's the prudent political move to do like Jared Leto is the one who swoops in and grabs his arm and it's like hey Alexander's the king now because they know his dad has just yeah if you wait a second right his dad has just married another woman and had another son with this other woman um, so it's like somebody else is going to be competing for the throne with you right. so you need to kind of be very public about i'm the king like right now it's but it's a real it's it's like the realization of how fucking rotten yes. this business is like when yeah. he's on his deathbed people are like who who are you gonna name name yeah. some, someone name someone uh because it's that everybody's sort of like every they love you and then you die and they're like okay let's move on <laughs> no. uh, and you're it's, you're you know People want to kill you. People hate you. You make a lot of enemies. It's, it's, yeah. um, I and think then, that's part of his turn. His twist is he starts of like, everybody loves me. I'm not going to do anything wrong. And then as his life get, gets more complicated, it's yeah. like, oh no, you can't function that way. You have to do stuff that make people hate you because otherwise you won't do anything. Yeah. Um, and you'll then just, it's, you'll just, <laughs> It's 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 very sharply punctuated by the moment he's dead. They start literally fighting over his body. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so it's just it's he's not great, and he's also been thrown into a very terrible, fucked up world, uh, where he's uh, so much is expected of him. Mm -hmm. I think that's why Jared Leto. Of course, that's part of their relationship with Jared Leto. Is Jared Leto never let him win when they would spar. Mm -hmm. and it was it meant a lot to him because it's like you're the only motherfucker who's actually like you know you kept it real i expected more conflict when people started like moving against him and everybody was like this is bullshit man we want to go home jared leto's kind of at, like he stays silent during that doesn't he yes he does because i guess he knows he knows when to push it and when not to yeah i guess uh, it's or it's like he knows he can't really step or he's in just devoted. Yeah. It's, it's partially because he's devoted and also because I think he knows he can't step in, in this particular situation. Like Alexander kind of has to show the strong face and be like, and, and deal with this because his men are frustrated right. with what he's doing specifically. Right. And he's objectively wrong. At, but, but at the point where he's like running through the crowd, like who said that? <laughs> right. Just arresting Execute random them. people. Who said that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was like, all right. Okay. All right, you lost little it. Little guy, you need a nap. Yeah. And again, I'm so glad they showed that it's, it's, it's very, it's just, it felt like a real epic where it's like the, the main character, you get to see him become a hero and a villain and then sort of recover. Mm hmm. But not fully recover. No. Like, he doesn't end in the same, like, respect it the same amount, I don't think. No, no, definitely not. And so it's it's just very, it was a very interesting uh, uh, path to follow with this character. This epic with Colin Farrell. Mm-hmm. He's killing it. Yeah, who is, this is back when, was this back when we weren't, we didn't realize how good he was? Yes, this is we back when. We didn't realize when we, what we yeah. had? We didn't realize how, how how good he was. Oliver Stone realized. Apparently, yeah. yeah. He's just like, I got to get this son see, of a bitch into my epic. Is he? Was he? Was he in Daredevil? Yeah, he'd already? been in Daredevil and Minority Report already, and I think maybe Hearts War. Did he go from Daredevil to this? He did. That's great. Mm -hmm. They were like, Colin, put on this wig, and he's like, All right. I mean, I still have the bald cap. <laughs> And it's such a shame because watching this, it's like, I, I hope he didn't get too much grief for this because it's a good movie. It really is. Yeah. Like I'm into it. Yeah. I dig this movie. It's like the most modern epic I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's fucking great. It's good shit. You should watch this shit. 
it's pretty good. Well, yeah, yes and no. I would okay. You should watch the unrated director's cut. Is that what this is? The the final cut. There's three versions. Yeah, this one's called the okay, final. The unrated cut. final cut. Mm-hmm. I can't speak on any of the other cuts. I would say avoid the theatrical cut. But also, you need to be the type of person who can watch a movie for three and a half hours, mm-hmm. and and understand that that movie is not going to be like a superhero movie. It's it's going to be, you know, a, a like a character, mostly like a drama. I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. It's it's primarily a drama. There's two enormous battles in it. Yeah. But yeah. Now this is some this is some dramatic shit. There's nothing more dramatic than fucking harpooning a man as an execution yeah fuck that dude that's some the, the, yeah fuck that dude no one liked that dude <laughs> yeah. so yeah just have yeah just have your have your expectations you just gotta be you gotta be open you gotta be open to this like as open as a baby's ass you gotta mm-hmm. be that that amount of open just to gaping. the idea of watching like an old school epic yeah gaping <laughs> as a as a yeah as a baby as a baby's ass yep just just gaping and that's that's the thought we'll end on <laughs> yeah thank you to uh mr hackroyd uh yeah. for 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 letting us for telling us to watch this movie i enjoyed it yeah i literally never would have watched this movie otherwise no i would have thought i would have just figured this was a bad movie yeah uh yeah um so let me let me tell you guys about our Patreon. Uh, mm, do it. We we because we have one. Yeah, it's uh, Patreon dot com slash Gamefully Unemployed. We have exclusive podcasts there, like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, and Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Woo! Uh, we have a tier where you can make us watch movies. Uh, I do. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is that not everybody can get away with. Let, like asking us to watch a three and a half hour movie you're it's a big swing you're taking a risk you have to really you have to really know if that movie is going to be good you know yeah people have done it in the past but like i don't want to encourage it just because i like this movie you know what i mean yeah does that make sense yeah no it makes sense well we, we like it, the amount of time it takes to watch we have to we have to be reasonable with so what we take these the, the the longer ones on a case-by-case basis yes that's true but also it's just like i just mean in general like if you don't want us to curse your name like don't give us the unrated director's cut that's three hours and a half long of the spirit you know like yeah. use your judgment mm-hmm. uh and i uh, dan Hackroyd here i don't know if if he knew uh but this was a good one. This was yeah. a good one. It's a strong pick. Yeah. Um, we also have a store, tpublic.com slash store slash Gamefully Unemployed, where you can get t-shirts, stickers, uh, masks, um, I think might be back in stock now. Um, all kinds of stuff. So check that out if you feel so inclined. And if you don't, then don't. You don't have to. I'm not going to make you. Yeah, we're not your... You're not. We're not your weird parents trying to trying to kill each other and fucking Zeus and mm-hmm. making we're, Val Kilmer statues and whatnot. We're not your weird crazy king. Yeah, to, no Toby Kebbell's gonna come in, gonna come in <laughs> and get us. You're safe from. You're safe from Tobes. Oh Toby. Oh Toby. 